What's going on guys? Welcome to the second part of the uh, ADX mini-series within our stocks and mathematics uh, calculations within Python. Always a mouthful to say it. Where we left off, I was showing you guys what ADX is. Now let's actually bring ADX to life by programming it ourselves. Uh, before we get started, if you haven't been following along uh, linearly in this uh, tutorial series, you are going to want to go ahead and grab this sample data. I did put it on my website, centex.com slash sample data. Note the camel case. If you don't camel case it, uh, you won't get the data. Uh, anyway, just uh, go ahead and reach this page, control A, control C, and uh, control V it into uh, some sample data.txt file that you put in the same directory as this script. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get, go ahead and get started here. We're going to go uh, import numpy as np. If you have been following along, a lot of this stuff is going to be identical to the way we've done it before. Sample data is going to equal open sample data dot text with the intention to read, and then we'll go ahead and read it into memory. Next, split data equals sample data dot split by new line. Next, we're going to say date close p high p low p open p volume equals np dot load text what text do we want to load we want to load up split data what delimiter do we want to use we're going to use a delimiter and actually let's go ahead and hit it enter key come down delimiter equals comma subsequently we do need to have unpack equal to true so we can actually unpack and uh, assign to these variables like so now we're all done Let's go ahead and get into the ADX system. So if you did follow the previous tutorial, because you will have had to follow the previous tutorial, actually this time, um, the previous tutorial was true range. So we calculated true range and then average true range, and we have to have done that because in this video and ADX, this system uses average true range within it. So you will have had to do the uh, ATR actually. So uh, let me go grab that code real quick and bring it up. The main thing that we're going to want to grab from here is going to be this tr function. So to find tr, just go ahead and highlight that. Come all the way down to the return part. Hit copy and just kind of paste that bad boy right in there. I'm going to go ahead and delete these print functions. I'm already confident that this works, so I don't need that for debugging anymore. And uh, so that's that. So we leave the tr function uh, right in here. Now the next thing we want to do is define directional movement because that was really the first thing we need to do is first do directional movement and get that positive directional movement and that negative directional movement identified and then we can define the uh, plus directional ind indicator and the negative directional indicator and then we can do the true range on those bad boys, get the ADX, plot that up and just be uh, overall awesome people. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and define DM for directional movement. It's going to need the following variables in here. Uh, date, open, high, low, close, yesterday's open, yesterday's high, yesterday's low, and yesterday's close. Cool. So that's DM and all the parameters for DM that we need. And uh, we'll come back over here. I just want to make some space. So first we have to calculate the directional movement. So that's going to be, oops, no one it to be all caps. Move up camel case equals high minus yesterday's high. And move down equals uh, yesterday's low minus the low of today. If zero is less than the move up, yet move up is greater than move down, uh, PDM equals move up. Else, PDM equals zero. Subsequently, if zero is less than move down, while move down is also simultaneously greater than move up, NDM, negative directional movement, equals whatever move down is. Otherwise, we want to do uh, NDM equals zero. So we'll just save our progress here. And let me bring up that image one more time of uh, the definition of this. So what we've just done is this statement here in this slide. So as you can see, we've got the negative directional movement and the positive directional movement um, defined. 
And if we bebop to the next slide to get the DI, the plus DI and the minus DI, now we got to do this 100x, 14 EMA, PDM divided by ATR, and that's where ATR comes in. So let's go ahead and get that underway. So one more thing we do want to add here, of course, is return D for date, uh, PDM, and then NDM. Make sure it's in that order, otherwise we're going to have some trouble. So we've done that. Now, if you recall, we actually need that exponential moving average. So since I well, it's in that other script uh, as well, or you can always grab exponential moving average from right here, syntax.com slash starting point dot pi. It's that full file that we graph stuff with. Take this right here, highlight exponential moving average, copy that function, paste that function right in there. Come down a little bit. Now we're going to define calc di's. So this is going to be the calc uh, plus di and minus di. And actually, that one's a pretty long one, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here and continue on in the next video. Uh, so stay tuned for the next video. If you're watching this one, that next video is already up, so you don't have to wait or anything for it. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching.